Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Multi-GPU gaming has been, well, it's been a factor since the Voodoo days. Remember Voodoo, that company that NVIDIA acquired ages ago. They used to have a technology called SLI, Scanline Interleave. Well, SLI has moved aside for SLI, Scalable Link Interface, as well as Crossfire X from the Red Team. What we're gonna look at today is what benefits you can get from going from a single graphics card to a dual graphics card solution and then even up to a triple graphics card solution. Welcome to our Tech Tips Live segment. Before we go ahead and show you guys the results, I want to tweet to the Twitter followers of Linus Tech which one they think is going to be the winner between the SLI scaling and the Crossfire scaling solutions and there's a reason I'm doing that because the tweets will show up there. So let's have a look at what people think and do some analysis before you guys see which one actually tests better. And then once again we can time lapse this. But I'm gonna like block the shadow just to, wow actually these lights are like pretty good. Okay we have our first result SLI then we have someone saying crossfire that's from Atchus 20. Robert Marcus 6, though, was our first respondent. So he read and responded to that tweet pretty quick. Okay, we got another vote for Crossfire. So the question was, which one will scale better up to three-way? It looks like, so far, out of, our, out of our tweeting viewers, we've got a pretty even mix. So remember, guys, all you have to do to participate in these like live Twitter segments is just sub, uh, follow, sorry, it's not subscribe, follow on Linus Tech. And then when you see the hashtags Tech Tips Live, just go ahead and reply back with whatever you think, or we might ask questions, or, or oh wow, that's like a, okay, Crossfire X will scale better based on past performance. Um, and we might do all kinds of things like uh, Q&A, or um, you know, who knows, we might use it for prizes in the future. Doesn't really matter, it's just gonna be a little bit more fun, a little bit more interactive. Got another vote for Crossfire X. Maybe we'll give, uh, we'll give people another, like, you know, let's give them till the 743 mark to see what the viewers think is going to happen. I feel like a radio personality right now where the whole thing is I'm just, like, talking. And uh, I think we're pretty much done here for now. So it looks like you guys think it'll be pretty even. Let's see how it turns out. Now, the reason we have multi-GPU configurations is because due to technology constraints and cost constraints, as well as yield constraints, that is how efficiently you can manufacture these things, you can only build a GPU or a CPU for that matter so big and so complicated. So beyond a certain point, it becomes so inefficient that you, you can't even really build it until the technology gets better. So what we're left with is taking more than one and combining them together through software in order to get as much efficiency as we can out of them. Now there are still issues that you can run into, that is issues with how linearly they scale. So scaling refers to how much better it performs the more GPUs you add. There can be issues with micro stuttering which is more or less noticeable depending on the person and depending on the configuration. Personally it doesn't bother me very much. I've, I've been asked a lot of questions about it and I honestly don't really notice it, so there you go, that's my take on it. So we're going to look into, mostly today, the scaling aspect of it. So right here we've got our Crisis 2 benchmark with Crisis 2 at 1080p with ultra presets, high res textures, and medium motion blur. These are high-end configurations, so we really wanted to push them to the limit. You can see here we've got a variety of different configs. We have 7970 times 1, 2, and 3. We have GTX 670 times 1, 2, and 3. And then just for reference, because it's a thousand dollar graphics card and it's like madness, we have a GTX 690 so we can compare, because the price is actually similar between a single GTX 690 and three GTX 670s, which is the better value solution, assuming you don't actually have to plug any other devices into your motherboard because you start filling it up with graphics cards you're not going to have much room left. So you can see with single GPU we're showing minimum frame rates of pretty much the same. So these two GPUs perform within like, eh, you know, a very narrow performance margin of each other. Remember these are real world run throughs so there is a little bit of variance from test to test. As soon as you scale up to two of them, once again they perform pretty similarly, however the 7970 pulls away from the GTX 670 in terms of the average frame rates while the minimums are quite close. Both of these are important. 
For a three-way configuration, the GTX 670 and the 7970 are, again, similar for minimum. Minimum sometimes can be a little bit flaky. It can jump around a little bit, depending on how Fraps records it. And they even out in terms of the average frame rate. And both of them beat the GTX 690 solution when you add three of them together. For our next test, we're going to take a look at Battlefield 3. So Battlefield 3 is a fairly demanding game. It also scales fairly well in a multi-GPU configuration. So you can see our single GPU configs score around 60 FPS. Both of them are pretty close in this game in terms of the average frame rate. As soon as we throw in a second GPU, average frames almost double, and minimum frame rates, again, are, are near double for both of the GPUs, which is outstanding. Then when you add a third GPU, we actually get still another almost linear improvement in performance for the GTX 670 in terms of the minimum frame rate. And then we get a lesser but still substantial improvement in performance in the average frame rate. So in this particular game, the three-way configurations absolutely destroy the GTX 690, which in terms of the GTX 670 looks pretty good considering that three of them cost about the same as a 690. Now for our next game, we're going to have a look at Skyrim. Skyrim is an example of a game that unfortunately didn't scale very well in our testing with multi-GPU solutions. Now this can be for a number of reasons. There's the resolution factor. So there's the fact that we're running at only 1080p. Now in the realm of normal gamers, 1080p is full HD, you know, like for consoles or whatever. I think they're still trying to run games properly at 1080p. However, for computers, we, with solutions like this, we can easily run games at much greater than HD resolutions, whether it's on a single monitor, like a 2560 by 1440, uh, high resolution monitor or whether it's on multiple monitors like a 3 by 1080p surround gaming setup in this particular case we would see better scaling for sure if we were running at a higher resolution but we're already in a situation where we're CPU limited in this game this engine just doesn't it requires more CPU power in order to scale to higher FPS. So from single GPU solutions, which score around 87 and 124 FPS, we scale up to sort of 100 and 130. And then once we go to three GPU solutions, they actually don't scale that much more at all. So this will be our last game as well as our conclusion. We're having a look at The Witcher 2. This is a very GPU intensive game. And for that reason, even at 1080p, when we turn on things like Uber sampling and ultra details, it still is GPU limited as opposed to CPU limited. So that's why we see that scaling by throwing more GPU horsepower at it. Whereas with a game like Skyrim, throwing more GPU horsepower at the solution didn't help at all because the CPU was the bottleneck or the limiting factor. All right, so here we go. With a single 7970 or 670, you see that AMD has a significant advantage in this game. Now, this is the first time we're running into one of those situations where multi-GPU doesn't always make a lot of sense. So check this out. With the 7970, we only get about a 30% boost going to two cards, and then we get like an additional, you know, 5%, 3% boost going to three cards from there. As a gamer, investing in these $500 graphics cards, I would find that, you know, not to be that satisfactory, okay? The GTX 670 does better, although it performs less at the very beginning. It scales almost perfectly up to two cards and then scales again another 20% or so when you add an additional card. So I, I find that to be a bit of a better solution, but still it's not perfect, which brings us to the whole multi-GPU thing. And what is the right answer? So I have a lot of people ask me, should I buy two GTX 560s or a single 670 or should I buy two of these or three of these or one of these? In general, here's what I have to say. If for your budget, you can get a better single GPU solution, go for it. There are instances where that is not necessarily the case, one of which is once you get to the very high end. Once you get to the very high end, if you find yourself still needing more performance, you just have to add more GPUs. In general, you get the best value for your dollar out of high-end SLI or Crossfire configurations with multiple monitors, very high-resolution gaming. Now, the other scenario is every once in a while, there's going to be a mid-range GPU that really just blows everything else away, like the 560 Ti did when it was first released. Two 560 Ti's in SLI made more sense than other competing solutions at the time, even on the high end, if you had a given budget. 
But even in that case, you can see that multi-GPU won't always scale and won't always be consistent. Whereas a single GPU will scale and be consistent across the board in all the games you play, not just the ones that are properly optimized. So thank you for checking out this episode on multi-GPU scaling and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.